tradition is like a river that flows from one generation to another it is a continuous flow that has no end one such indian tradition is that of building monuments to commemorate one's ancestors in certain places a samadhi or a stambh is constructed at the burial site the buddhists brought about a change into this practice they added a new dimension to architecture by building stupas over the remains of buddhist monks the advent of islam into india added a new chapter to this tradition it was that of building tombs the taj mahal is an incomparable example of this tradition in rajasthan this tradition underwent a metamorphosis and the outcome was the construction of cenotaphs or chhatris in the indo islamic architecture style from the 18th to the middle of the 19th century the marathas of malwa region worked at perfecting a new style of chhatri construction the role of the holkar family is quite important with regard to this new achievement the holkar ruler had chhatris or cenotaphs constructed in memory of their ancestors or family members the images of the concerned person and that of his spouse were placed in them since the holkars were shaivites every chhatri had a shivling consecrated in the garbagriha or the sanctum sanctorum innovations in the ben maratha art styles have been brought about in these chhatris the holkar royal family's chhatris were first constructed in the year 1780 ad when maharani ahilya bai instructed that chhatris dedicated to the memory of a father in law and the founder of the holkar dynasty subedar malhar rao holkar the first be constructed at alampur in bind district later she had chhatris constructed to commemorate her husband khande rao her father in law subedar malhar rao and her son mali rao in indore at chhatri bal the chhatris reveal not only ahilya bai's deep sense of respect for her family but also her great love for architecture as well as her aesthetic sense in indore the chhatris belonging to the holkar dynasty can be found in chhatri bagh and at krishnapura these can be classified into three groups according to their architectural styles the first group comprises of those chhatris which are based on the rajput tradition but built in the maratha style these include subedar malhar rao holkar the first chhatri and mali rao's chhatri at chhatri bagh and bolia sarkar's chhatri at krishnapura The second group of chhatris in the Malwa Maratha style developed from the ancient temple architecture. The notable chhatris in this style are that of Subedar Tukoji Rao Holkar the 1st, Krishna Bai Holkar and Malhar Rao Holkar the 2nd. The third group has the chhatri dedicated to Hari Rao Holkar at Chhatri Bagh. It is in the Maratha style based on the South Indian temple architecture tradition. This chhatri was constructed in 1784 
by Maharani Ahilya Bai. It has been constructed on a raised plinth in the Rajput Maratha style. It is octagonal in shape and has a double dome. Both the domes look like inverted lotuses. The front portion of the main entrance as well as both the rear doors are semicircular in the Amir style from Rajasthan. The two columns of the entrance are also joined at the top in a semicircle. Below it lies the circle of lotuses. The dome over the Ardhmandap as well as the bigger dome stand on artistic pillars. There are 12 ornamental pillars around the Sanctum Sanctorum. The terrace has an open Pradakshina path. The base of the pillars is high and rectangular with geometrical designs, human figures and elephants carved on them. The column shaft is octagonal, tapering towards the end and culminating in a bracket capital. They are decorated with geometrical designs and flowering creepers. Surya, Mahishasur Mardini, Ganesh, Brahma, Yam, as well as tales from the Krishna law are carved on the Chatri. This is an excellent example of the Maratha architectural style of the 18th century. Ahilya Bhai's son Subedar Male Rao died on March 13, 1767 after a very short reign. She constructed the Chhatri in his memory close to those dedicated to her husband and father-in-law in the Chhatri Bagh precincts. It is a highly artistic structure built on a raised plinth. It is octagonal with a double dome. The sculptor's vision and skill have added new dimensions to stone carving. Excellent technique, efficient guidance and artistic taste have also contributed to its care. The terrace is approached by a flight of steps. On either side of the entrance, the figures of Devs and Dwarpals are to be seen. The plinth has representations of Bhairav, Ganesh along with Riddhi Siddhi and Yam. The second part of the terrace has Ghat Pallav and creepers engraved on it. The column heads have lotus petals in place of Kichak figures. There are kalash decorated with lotus buds and figures of gajvial. The entrance lying between the front row of pillars has the added attraction of the illika toran. The garbhagriha lies in the center. The main dome is above it. 
is a statue of Mali Rao seated on an elephant in the Garbagriha with those of the queens at the rear. The chhatri dedicated to Bolia Sarkar also belongs to this order. The Bolia family was related to the Holkars through marriage. This chhatri is of Chimanji Rao Appa Sahib Bolia, son of Bhima Bai and Govind Rao Bolia. It was constructed in the year 1858 by their grandson Sardar Narayan Bolia. The layout of this edifice is similar to that of Subedar Malhar Rao Holkar's and Male Rao's chhatri. It is outstanding because of its size, beauty and grandeur. The double domes, the raised plinth and the carvings are very artistic. This chhatri is built on an artistic raised terrace or adhishthan which can be reached by way of steps on either side there are attractive torrents raised on paved pillars on all four sides there are 20 pillars on the adhishthan enclosing the circumambulatory path of pradakshina path the execution of the octagonal garbagriha with pillars on four sides is exquisite it has two entrances one to the east and another to the west the chhatri's elevation adds to its grandeur the main dome is over the garbagriha and it is surrounded by lesser domes constructed over the doorways there are 32 columns in all in the chhatri these are covered with figures of deities and human beings the tapering column rises from the lotus pot set on a block an inverted lotus covers the column and the capital rests on the inverted lotus the pillars framing the entrance hold up semi lunar arches and the others have decorated arches over them the ends of the arches terminate to represent flowers in full bloom the columns are again covered with figures of dancers in different mudras and female musicians there are more figures of dancers soldiers sitar players tabla players and other such representation figures of rural women soldiers on parade and confrontations between elephants and horses are other attractions